Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. Staying safe, taking care of yourself, all that kind of stuff. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. It's great to meet you. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. This is not a tutorial video. This is another briefing video about the Luminar AI app that is coming late this year from my friends over at Skylum Software. I've got two other videos in this little playlist I'll link to there talking about Luminar AI and it's coming, as I said, uh, towards the end of this year. Um, I wanna jump into some slides, talk about some of the new features. Primarily, I'm gonna talk about templates. I've had a couple of briefings with them recently, I learned more about the product. I'm now able to share that. I still do not have the product, so I cannot do a tutorial and I cannot yet share my experiences or any tips and tricks on how to use it or to get ready for it because I don't have it. As soon as I have it, trust me, I'm gonna make so many videos, you're gonna be sick of hearing about it. But um, I am gonna to talk today about Luminar AI and templates. Let's get going. Um, you've seen this slide before. It is AI-based photo editing, but that does not mean AI takes over and does everything for you. I've said this several times, but I just wanna say it again because people still uh, either don't believe it or they haven't heard it enough or something, but um, you have control over the photo. You get to do what you want to do with your photo using the tools. You can use AI to do things for you or you can do it your own, uh, on your own. So I'm gonna talk about that with templates because I think templates will come into play in that regard. Let's talk about first pre-order pricing. The pre-order pricing has changed. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and flip into this. Here we go. So it, it was lower before during the first 30,000 customers. They've hit that limit and exceeded it and now um, Pricing has gone up a little bit as they mentioned that it would. So uh, I'm gonna do this backwards. If you're an existing customer, meaning you own a copy of Luminar or a copy of Aurora HDR, you can get one seat or one copy. In other words, a copy of the software to use on one computer. You can get that for $64 uh, or 79 for two seats. It's $15 more for an additional seat. That has also changed. It was 10 during the first pre-order period. If you're a new customer, I'm in the section up above now, um, it's 74 for one seat or 89 for two seats. So just keep that in mind that pricing has changed. I do have an affiliate link down below. If you choose to purchase and use that link, they pay me a kind of a referral fee commission thing. Um, doesn't cost you anything more, helps me out quite a bit and I really appreciate it. And for those of you that have very already pre-ordered or mentioned that you're gonna pre-order with my link, I really appreciate it. It's super meaningful to me and helpful. It allows me to continue to make these videos at no charge to you, which I've got a whole lot of them planned, as I said. So uh, we're gonna keep going. The, uh, the product ships this holiday season. As I said, I do not yet have a date. I think we're looking at mid to late December, but I don't really know. The thing is you can pre-order now and you have a 30 day money back guarantee from the ship date. So you could buy it now, they will charge your credit card now, but you have 30 day return from when you get it. So keep that in mind. Enough about that, let's talk about the product. It is about AI, it is AI based. So of course this slide is true. Artificial intelligence comes first. When you put a photo in there or open a photo, the AI is gonna start analyzing the photo. That's how it's gonna operate. It is an entirely new engine underneath. You've heard this from me before. You still have traditional sliders. You still have control. Templates are the new version of looks, which were the new versions of presets. They're called something different because they do a lot more. They're, first off, they're creating different categories. To be clear, the, uh, the user interface is not finalized. So keep that in mind, because I am gonna show you some screenshots. Uh, and secondly, um, that means also because the product is not finalized, these categories could change. I have some screenshots of the app. These are the basic ideas of what they're gonna do. They are gonna have a quite a few template categories with multiple templates in each. So based on the category of photo, you're gonna have some things to choose from. Now here's the thing that gets everybody, and that is Luminar AI, because it's called AI, I think everybody's like, oh my God, the machines, rise of the machines, right? They're taking over. And I love that movie, by the way. Um, but the machines are not taking over. The software is made by humans, and it's humans that are putting things into it and helping to drive it. AI algorithms are, of course, making it smarter and able to sort of um, computerize or automate, is a better way to say it, automate routine tasks that might be kind of harder to do or boring and monotonous and make them quicker for us with the goal being that you get a beautiful photo at the end. However, you've got multiple options here. You can take a, a workflow that's AI guided. You could take one that's AI assisted or you can do a more traditional approach. 
Let's break these down real quick. When you first load an image, a template is going to be suggested, and that's because they have technology in there that's AI-based that they call 3D depth mapping. It's going to analyze the contents of the photo. It's going to figure out things in the foreground, things in the background. It's going to figure out depth, which is going to come into play for a couple of the tools that we're going to talk about later in the video. But the templates are going to be suggested because of the AI, it, because it's recognizing the type of photograph. Oh, this is a portrait. So the portrait templates are going to be suggested to you. You can one click those or you can go into the category and highlight over them to get previews on your photo of what they will look like. With the AI guided, if you don't like the first template that's suggested, but you want to look in that category, great. Click through, check out other ones. You'll get the preview there. You get to choose and you can also choose the intensity or what's known as the opacity of the amount of that template that's being applied to your photo. So that's going to be a great way to quickly sort of call your photos and say, okay, this portrait got uh, ding, 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 like that one, boom. And if you'd like that look, by the way, you can apply that template to your photo and then copy it, paste it, if you will, onto other photos. The great thing about the AI is it recognizes the differences in each photo and it's going to adjust accordingly as I understand it. I think that's pretty cool and certainly a lot more powerful than something like a preset or a look, which is going to give you the same amount of uh, impact on every photo, regardless of the contents of the photo. So templates are more advanced in that regard. Okay. AI assisted, a template is suggested, you choose it, but then you go in and alter that. That's the same as taking a preset or a look and saying, click, I put it on there. Yeah, but that's too much of this, not enough of that, and swizzle the sliders a little bit. It's AI assisted. You start with the AI to give you a direction to go in, and then you take that template and say, that's the that's how I want it to look, but. And the but is where you go in, and the AI has assisted you, gotten you on the path that you want to go down, but then you go customize that and make it really your own. The cool thing is you can then save that as your own template, rename it, and use it again and again and again, just like a look or a preset. And of course, AI tools with traditional editing, you can skip all of the suggested templates and go straight into editing and say, I just want to move sliders around because that's what I do. And you're looking at a guy who loves to do that. I've got how many videos? 500 videos here on YouTube. And what am I doing? I'm moving sliders around. You can bet I'm excited about that because I've got AI tools that are going to help me do things more rapidly, get more quickly to an awesome result, but I still have full control. That's very exciting to me. I'm going to do all of this. It's going to depend on the image, but you're looking at a guy who makes videos about how to move the sliders and do them. And I'm excited about this AI based tool because it's going to save me time and it's going to give me new things to do and new things to think about. So I'm pretty excited. I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Let's get into this. So here's a few screenshots of what the app may look like. Again, the app, the UI, all that stuff, it's not final. We don't have beta copies yet. So just keep that in mind. But you can see here, um, if you look in the top, you can see where it's highlighted templates at the top. You can sort of follow the workflow. And I talked about this in a previous video. You've got catalog, hold my photo, find my photo, template, make an adjustment to my photo for me or suggest an edit. And then edit, I want to go do stuff to the either the template that's suggested or I jump jump straight to edit and do that myself and then publish, of course. And again, I think we're going to see more in publish. I'm just guessing they haven't told me anything, but I think that's an untapped section of the app based on um, what export is like in Luminar 4. It's not super like, complex is not the word. It's not super complex, but it's not super developed. I think there's more room to play. We'll see. But you can see over here on the right hand side, it says for you, big city lights, breathtaking cityscapes. Um, it's recognizing the content of the photo and suggesting templates for you. And then there's categories as well, like creative landscape and beneath those different uh, looks that you can apply to the photo. Here's another landscape. Again, we're on the template tab, so keep that in mind. It seems pretty obvious to me now that catalog templates, edit and publish is going to be across the top. I'm assuming again, the app isn't final, but you can see this is a beautiful photo and there they've applied a specific kind of look to it based on this template, which is in the creative landscape. You can also see that at the bottom of this uh, screenshot here, it says template name and the opacity slider has been pulled down a little bit. So it's not at hundred percent opacity, they pulled that down, which is, Hey, that template looks, template looks really good, but it's a little too much. Let me pull it back. You see, you get the edit button and the reset button as well. So I think these are the things that we're going to see. And you can see that there's some examples of categories there. Here's a portrait, same kind of thing, right? This is a kind of a repeat with different photos, but 
Same setup, same stuff across the top and on the right hand side for you. I'm assuming that is the suggested templates and you can see that there's old fashioned film looks, various portrait looks, things like that. They're, they're going to come into play again because it's got scene recognition and the AI with the 3D depth mapping. It's figuring out, okay, that's a portrait. I need to suggest portrait templates for this photo. And here's one more. This one's, I think, particularly cool because they did kind of the before and after within the frame here. But you can see that's a very different color look, which I love. It's got a lot of different shadow and contrast, and it's got lots of light leak. I don't know um, how much, if that's one overlay that's built into a template or something, but basically you can see there's a light leak there, which I like a lot. I've used in other apps before. I find them pretty interesting. But again, template name there, it looks like this is a, uh, a, a situation where you may be building your own template. My guess is the heart is favorites. You can have a favorites for template probably. And those three dots is probably where you can go in and create the name for it uh, and maybe other things as well. Again, just some example screenshots. The app is not fully locked down, so keep that in mind. Here's a stunning landscape from Elia Licardi. Sunsets collection. Hey, guess what? Luminar AI said, hey, that's a sunset. You probably need the sunsets collection. Let me suggest this for you. Again, the AI coming into play and saying, hey, Jim, take a look at this. Try this on your photo. Okay, let's touch on Atmosphere AI and the mood tool real quick. So you may have seen this photo before. Atmosphere AI is going to give you the ability to put things like fog and all that. And while I've, I've see, seen some people um, have responded to this image by saying, that fog doesn't necessarily look real. Keep in mind, you get to choose the amount of the effect. The thing that I wanted to point out about this is, to me, that is the 3D depth mapping in play because if you're naturally in this scene in the left and there is fog, the stuff that's closer to you is going to appear to have less fog around it and the thing, things that are further in the distance are going to seem more densely covered by fog. That's exactly what seems to be happening in the image on the right. So, like it or not, I think that's pretty awesome and the fact that we're going to be able to control that is going to be super cool. Here's Bokeh AI. Bokeh AI works on the background. That's another AI advancement that you've, uh, I believe, heard about and of course we'll hear more about it and you'll, uh, you'll have yours truly doing videos. But look at the background here where you had a nice kind of Bokeh. You're, it's you know referring to the quality of the out of focus area in the background basically but the Bokeh, as I call it, um, it looks fine on the left image but with Bokeh AI on the right, again, 3D depth mapping, it's figuring out this is the background. We need to apply it there and not apply it in the foreground. So she stays consistently sharp. The background gets even blurrier. Okay, here's another screenshot. This is in the edit menu, as you can see. So I wanted to point this out for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's in the edit menu. Number two, on the right-hand side, you see some familiar tools, Enhancer AI, Color AI, don't know what that is, but I'm super curious. Sky AI, which is sky replacement, I believe it appears to be, um, based on the sliders that are in that. And again, it's a sample screenshot. I don't know if this is final, so the UI may change. But if you look on the right-hand side, you see it, you're on the Essentials tab, which is the upper right. The one below that would be Creative, just like in Luminar 4. Below that, Portrait, and the very bottom, Pro that seems to follow the same methodology as it does in Luminar 4. So I feel like, I've had people say, I don't want to relearn a new app. I don't feel like you're going to have to relearn. If you already know Luminar 4, I really truly believe that your knowledge and skills there are going to transfer to Luminar AI quite well. The other reason I wanted to show you this image is, is the image itself. Well, I mean, the image itself is freaking stunning. I've seen photos of this place before. I believe it's in Germany. Hopefully you've seen it and taken a photo. I have not, but someday, someday I'm going to go there and get that because that is too cool. Too cool. Um, but this is 3D depth mapping. It's recognizing what's close and what's far. And you can see some of that fog effect or mist has been placed in the image. And I think that looks really nice and really lovely. I'm really excited about that. So I think that's pretty cool. The other thing um, that was Atmosphere AI, the other thing is Mood. Mood is apparently taking over, uh, or is perhaps a LUT, uh, it looks like from this screenshot, they haven't said this specifically, but Mood appears to be the new version of LUTs where they're including LUTs in Mood, and then you've got the controls there. So I don't know if that's a replacement for the LUT tool that was in Luminar 4, or if this is um, something in, in addition to it where you can add LUTs. I'm not sure. I'm guessing it's a replacement for the LUT tool, but that looks pretty awesome as well. And you know, I think you've got a lot of power at your finger, fingertips if you're taking templates and then going in and making custom edits to it because the template's going to give you a roadmap 
to success and then the edit is going to allow you to customize that success to your own wants and desires. So that's really it for this video. I wish I had more to share with you, but I don't, but there's more information coming out. I think I'll have the app in about a month, maybe. I don't really know, but believe me, as soon as I have it and can start sharing uh, my own screenshots and my own videos, you're going to see a lot. Until then, I'll keep doing these kind of um, slideshow kind of videos. If you have questions, leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer, but there's a lot of answers I don't have yet. I'm trying, my friends. I appreciate the interest and following along. Let me know um, if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks so, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. You guys take care, and adios.